Paul Larry, Big Blue, Baker Cheese Awarded, 2020 Dairy Plant of the Year. Wow. I don't know who would award that, but there you go. We are taking off in the house. Um, we are loaded up. I ran up to Appleton yesterday and just got this load loaded. It's going on down to Capel, Texas. I don't, I'm not going to be down there until Monday morning. So there's really no need, need for me to take off. And um, I needed to uh, work on a truck here, on the trailer here and stuff. So I came home and did all that stuff. And then now we are starting our way off to Texas. shop um, I've had a bit of an issue with cameras I think I forgot a couple cameras at home I had three of them with me and the last time I was here I actually dropped one into a bucket of antifreeze so that camera's junk and the other one I was using in doing some welding I don't know like four weeks ago or something like that and I actually pitted the lens on it messed it all up so it's got like these black spots all over when you can when you record with it and I had one working camera kind of going down to Texas on loads that I was doing from Wisconsin down to Texas and everything. And then it stopped working. I couldn't get it to work anymore. It was just a whole big issue. But uh, I've been messing around with them and stuff. And I took parts out of one and made up one and I got it to work. I'm hoping it's working. Uh, we'll find out when I review it. But um, I have been working up here in the ADL shop. I got in here last night. And I've actually been working on a Volvo. <laughs> been working on 802. Uh, I've done quite a few different things to it. And um, let's see here. Let's see what. Let's see what my list is here. Um, so my I was supposed to replace the engine air filter. Did that. Replace the DEF filter, did that. Replace the coolant filter, did that. Air dryer filter, did that. Fuel tank vent filters, did those. It's uh, Volvo's, they got vent filters. Um, Replace the Qualcomm cable. Ooh, that was a job. I had to tear apart the whole dash. Um, when we got this truck, I believe Bowman. I think it was Bowman. They put in uh, the cable. It's actually laying over there on the floor. And they had that thing just every single part of the dash run around there. There's no reason for it. 
But I guess uh, Qualcomm wasn't being able to, you know, the boss wasn't able to communicate with it or something, so we had to replace it. And uh, went with a newer style cable too. And uh, it's quite the big job, but since I had that all apart, I ended up actually installing a pretty cool right way scale into this. I'll show it to you guys. Um, it was actually supposed to be John's, but this truck was here and the dash was all torn apart, so we put it in this one. Um, when I say we, I mean me. Replace power steering fluid filter. Yep, yep, did that. Replace the trailer cord. He wants to have shorter trailer cords on all these trucks. And replace the dozer injector. And did that. Um, what basically I ended up doing is um, I ended up finding that the glad hat handle, the holder here, was busted. So I put a new one of those on there. Uh, those little filters, they're actually down up underneath, behind here. It's just a vent tank, the vent line. Most trucks, it's the vent line that hangs down. This has got little plastic filters on it. So I ended up putting that on there. And then um, I guess it's been having issues with the APU because I tried to start the APU up last night when I was uh, inside the cab because it's a bit warm here, boys and girls. How you can see, I'm, 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 my shirt, I'm just wringing wet. Uh, it's actually starting to cool down. I think it's probably maybe just below 90 now. It's starting to get a little cloudy. I heard there's a storm coming in. They're saying that it might actually get down to like in the 70s. So that'd be cool. It's been hot. I actually, I pulled my iPad up here checking SD cards. Make it, I wanted to start over fresh with a new SD card. So I wanted to reformat. I couldn't get my, um, I just had my iPad sitting in my truck in big blue and I actually had to put it on the air conditioner for a while because it was so hot that the iPad wouldn't go on the temperature was so hot I mean it wasn't on or nothing it's, it's hot but uh, the APU has been given issues I guess it's been having codes for a while and it turned out to be a coolant temperature sensor I ran it last night and um, and I and it shut off on me and I checked the codes on it and turned out that um, it was a temperature water uh, coolant temperature sensor and the boss was able to get a new one today and I was able to change it. I uh, think it's such a booger. It's, it's behind here and I mean it's this far from the bottom of the cab. It, it's crazy. Uh, the boss has another mechanic that's kind of coming in here working once in a while too and um, I guess he did the oil change on the APU and the boss, I saw the list, the boss had him um said uh replace air filter and he wrote on there you can't change this air filter it's impossible or something like that um it's hard you just got to be like spider-man or something to crawl in there and reach in with your arms it's pretty crazy but um did all that stuff i'll show you guys the scale Three, two, one. It's actually right here. This is where I've mounted it. There's really no other place on the dash and stuff. Um, he's actually had this when this is supposed to go into John's truck. These trucks actually have built-in scales on them. Um, but none of it, they're, I guess they're just, I don't know if they're complicated or what. I don't know. I, but I guess, the, I guess the drivers can't figure them out, can't get them to work or something. I don't know. But I, I, John, I know John's been having issues. He can't figure out how to read them, how to do them and stuff. So, right way actually makes these digital load scales. I'll turn it on here. You can see it right there. And it's all hooked up and everything to the airbags. And um, it's all touchscreen. And um, saying that it's 18,700 pounds right now, but it's got to be calibrated. Um, that's about what the truck is. The truck, this truck weighs 18,000, I believe. It says right here. Front, uh, rear, total weight, 18,620. So it's pretty close. But uh, it's got a digital scale on there. And it's got to be all calibrated. I got the instructions hanging here for the driver. So when he shows up, telling him that he needs to actually calibrate this on a CAT scale. Use his app. Do not move your truck. Calibrate it as it's on the scale. 
do not pull off the scale until you've gone through it. And it all starts on page 16 in this instruction manual, so he can just walk step by step and and uh, calibrate this scale up. But it looks like it's pretty close, so that's pretty cool. Three, two, one, and uh, over on this side, um, I pretty much I did all the, the fluids and I did grease on it and stuff. We were gonna change oil, but it's like ten thousand miles away from an oil change, so it's kind of a waste. It, you know, he'll be back in you know probably six to eight thousand miles from now, and then maybe it's a little closer he can do it, but it's kind of waste right now. Uh, this dozer injector that was fun too. I actually had to take all the fenders off underneath here, pull this off, and I was able to turn the tire. I was able to crawl up in a hole it's a little little fitting thing and it has like a hose that goes to it and um has like a little nozzle sprays into the exhaust and um i was able to change that it's back up underneath here on the exhaust pipe so this truck is ready to go 802 is all done everything is completed on the list plus a couple other things i found and uh epu is running good now no more alarm codes so driver should be good with that so you shouldn't have uh, any more yellow flashing lights on his APU. Um, guys have asked me, how do I get this program to check my APU? Um, you have to have, here, let me open this up. Three, two, one. All right, you have to have a computer that is pre Windows 10. Okay, that's the that's the big thing. Pre Windows 10. So the boss here has this older Panasonic Puff Book or whatever. So I'll show you what I do. Three, two, one. So basically, all you do is just start the computer up. Okay, there it is. And there is this little USB cable that comes out of the APU box someplace. And pretty much, you just, it's all simple. You just want to plug it into a USB port. I think this computer is a little finicky sometimes it doesn't want to read there it goes okay so you plug it in there and it comes up and you want to click on open folder to view files using Windows Explorer so you click on that and then there's this here screen auto run auto run all this stuff you want to click on this here start this one right here you double click on it, it does a little bit of loop and then it comes up, and there it is. Okay. Um, I don't know if I can, if I have power to it or not. It may not read anything. We'll see here. So I did turn it off. Okay, it does have power. It does have uh, power to it. So it'll tell you all this different stuff on here and all this. This is just the dashboard. Right here is number of alarms zero. Um, you can go over to system, system monitoring and stuff. It'll tell you RPM, what the cabin temperature is, what the ignition system is at, what the voltage. And um, you can go to programmable settings here, and you can change all different kinds of things. How long it runs for, um, when it starts to charge, you know, what amperage and everything, all that kind of stuff. But then if you have an alarm, you can actually click on alarms up here and it'll load all the alarms and you can see it and that's how i was able to find that the coolant one was it but now we have no active alarms so you got to have pre windows 10. um 
I had a computer, three, two, one. I had a different computer that I was carrying with me. It was a nicer computer, and I tried plugging it in, and I was on the road because I was having an issue with the APU, and I plug it in, it would not come up. And I talked to the boss. He's like, I don't know. You just, I just plug it in. And he was doing it with this one. He goes, I don't know why it's not working. And I stopped at a Thermo King place to get some parts or something. And I asked them about it. And the first thing the guy asked me, it was a mechanic. He was kind of walking through and heard. And the service guy was talking. He's like, oh. And the mechanic, he turned around, looked at me. He goes, do you have Windows 10 on this computer? And I said, yeah. He goes, you have to go and buy it. He goes, now with the new operating systems, he says, Thermal King has actually put something in there that you actually have to buy the program from them. He says, if you got a pre-Windows 10, he says, plug it in, everything works. You know, There's some stuff that you can't do. You have to have the codes to get into it, and only the Service King or the Thermal King technicians have those codes. We don't have those codes. There is a couple things, but we've been able to do everything in this thing. So it's pretty pretty minimal, but if you got a pre Windows 10, so I mean if you don't, I mean tell you the truth, and you got an APU, and you know you want to be able to monitor, um, go to the pawn shop. You can find an old laptop, you know, pretty cheap, and just find an old la cheap laptop, pre Windows 10, plug it in, there you go. So now I am going to be going to um, grab Big Blue. Big Blue has got an issue. And I need to get that truck in here next. So I'm going to be pulling 802 out and parking it. The driver is going to be coming in later tonight. And uh, I'm going to be pulling Big Blue in. I had a little breakdown coming from Texas here. And I kind of did a little bit of rigging to the, make sure I could get it here. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So I bet you're wondering, what did I do? What, did, what happened to Big Blue? Well, does that give you a sign? Mr. DOT didn't see a thing. <laughs> I actually blew an airbag. I actually blew an airbag and it was leaking and stuff. I was on a real big time crunch and everything. Didn't have time to mess with it. And uh, I actually had a horrible time with the load that I brought from Texas. Because I was coming up and I had reefer issues. Um... Airflow, air, evaporator airflow sensor went out on it. And the only way that it could be changed was to take the whole reefer unit off. I mess with it, mess with it and stuff because I have the codes where I can actually go into them and, and turn off alarms and all this stuff. And I tried to keep it running. I kept, I kept messing with it on the way up here. Stopped like 20 times messing with it. Finally, we ended up having taken into a care of their place. And, and he was like, the only thing I can do is pull a wire on that sensor. And then change some alarms and stuff so it keeps running and everything. But we'll do it on, you know, continuous. And then you can get unloaded and get it fixed. Or otherwise, we have to pull the whole unit off. The whole front of the unit off of the trailer and I was like no we're not doing that <laughs> so that's what we were able to do and we were able to keep it running but I had such a bad time getting up here in enough and I went to go hook back up to the trailer and had a blown airbag and I was just like oh, I had no time and everything so I ended up doing a little rigging and uh, basically just pinched out the line and if you take it off kind of more permanent now. Maybe it's because it's not it doesn't have a load on it. I don't know. But it's this airbag up here. It's this airbag right here. And the I can hear it leaking. I don't know if you guys can or not. Probably there you can hear it. Um, but when the weight's on there, she just comes right out of there. And the truck, I mean, the, all the airbags are just dropped. It was running right on the frame and stuff, so I couldn't do that. So ended up, uh, so we got it up here. I got it up here, and 
the boss man has got me a new airbag. So I'm going to pop that airbag on there because I have to go and do a delivery tonight. There's a driver bringing a load back down here, and I have to deliver it. I have a 6 a.m. appointment at Costco, so I'm going to get this truck fixed. And then after that, I'll be pulling in 794 and doing some more stuff on that one. Three, two, one. Well, guys, we got the old airbag out. And, uh, yeah, she's pretty old. Probably original. She's um, pretty pitted up on the bottom here. So it was time. It's probably they're probably gonna start going, start leaking here. So I'll probably end up having to change them here and there. Uh, the truck's got like six hundred and twenty thousand on it right now. So it's getting up there a little bit, but um, little trick to get these out. Because this one here, some some of them only have one nut on the top, one, and then they'll have one bolt on the bottom. This one here has actually two, and and then it has the main stud down on the bottom too. Um, but the problem is, is that when you pull the lines off and everything to pull it, all the air leaks out and everything drops down. Now what you can do is you can put a jack underneath here and raise the frame up. But the easiest way to do it is just to pinch off a line. I got the vice grips back on there. I fired up the truck. Boom. The whole truck lifted up. Gave me plenty of room. And I was able to uh, just knock that one out. And, and uh, I got the, took the old fitting out of it because there was a reducer fitting that was in it. And now I'm going to put, put this one back in. Well, we got her all put back in there and aired her up. And this quick connect is leaking. So now we got to change out that fitting. It's probably been on there so many years, you know, I took it apart, it ain't going to seal back up. I oiled it and cleaned it, it's just not going to happen. So I'm going to pull that apart, put a new fitting on there. There we go, no more bubbles. Yay. So that's all fixed up. Um, I was actually supposed to get a package today. I was supposed to get my air ram that goes in here that opens and closes the fifth wheel. Uh, I have not had this in a long time. I'm talking probably a year. <laughs> I've been after the boss to get this. And he said it was supposed to show up today in FedEx, but it didn't show up. I didn't get no packages. So it'll probably be here tomorrow. That'd be nice. I don't have to reach underneath and grab my handle anymore. Hook that back up. He did get me one right after I said something to him about it that was out, but he got me this one. And he was misunderstanding and stuff. It took a long time. I actually found the part number for it. And he ordered it up. So I'm going to be pulling this truck out, pulling big old blue out, and parking it, and then uh, I'm going to pull in 794 and get started on that one. Well guys, we got 794 brought in the shop here. Got the shop somewhat cleaned up. Um, I don't know if it's safe. Um, What I need to do is injector lines, but I need a special tool for that. Um, I, the last time I was in here, the engine was power washed and just ran for a day, and I noticed I found where a lot of the oil was leaking was number three, four, and five, where the fuel injection lines go into the head. So I got all the parts, but I don't. Have, there's a special tool to take that apart. He's trying. He's been working with snap the snap-on guy trying to get the part, trying to get the tool. So hopefully tomorrow. Uh, I have to take the turbo back off again. It's leaking uh, the exhaust manifold gaskets. The old ones were put on there. I don't know why they were put on there. We didn't didn't have the new ones, and the old ones are just put on there. But it is leaking, so I got to take that all apart again. The batteries. This is a big problem with this truck. Uh, front end shaking. Check wheel bearings. Install vertical muffler. Um, he wants to put a vertical muffler going up. Uh, but we do not have one here. I guess he's checking with some junkyards. He's got to get the mounts and everything. And then we'll have to, uh, to do some welding and pipes and everything coming up and all that going up. But don't have that stuff right now. So basically, I'm going to test all these batteries. Okay, so this battery's at 12 volts, not too bad. Um, this is a tester um, that actually Thermal King Bob 
he was the one that, well, this thing is already dropped. It's down to 11.98, 11.97. Um, this is a tester that the Thermo King Bob recommended because I wanted a tester that could actually test the batteries in the truck. And the problem with a lot of testers is you can't have them hooked up to four batteries. So you have to sit here and do this and break them all down and test them individually. But this tester here will actually test them all together. Now I've done it twice and I've used this on other trucks and stuff already and it's worked great every time. But for some reason on this truck, it keeps coming up with different. It keeps coming up saying replace, charge, and eh, not so good, you know, whatever. So that's why I decided to pull them out. I can tell you that battery over there is hot too when I pulled it out. So that usually means not good. But this is a tester from Midtronics. Uh, Thermo King Bob said so this, this is the company to go with. These guys are the ones that have the best testers. And this is a Midtronics MDX 700 HD. Uh, I actually called and talked to Midtronics. I actually talked to them about being sponsored by them actually. And um, my boss actually went on eBay and he found this this unit on eBay for pretty cheap, so he picked it up anyways. They never did get back to me, whatever. But um, this here will run a test on these batteries. So you just hook it up and you just run through it. It's out of vehicle. Enter. It's a regular flooded. Cranking app is 700 on these. Enter. It's testing. This does a little testing thing. Okay, so it's asking charge state. We're going to go before charge. Okay, I knew that's what it was going to say. It's only showing 111 cold cranking amps. Now I'm going to. I'm going to do the test over again, and I'm going to do after. So I just pulled this truck in here. And it's been outside running for a while. And, I mean, the battery should be charged. They just seem, they can't seem to hold the charge. So now I'm going to say it's after charge and see what the difference is. Out of vehicle. I'm going to do after charge. Okay, so it's saying same exact. It's before, if I put before charge, it came up with 111 cold cranking amps out of 700, and it's 11.94 volts. When I do it the other way, it actually comes back. It actually comes back and says recharge and then test. I've recharged these things so many times. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, this one here is only at 8.4 volts. Out of vehicle. And after charge. Place batter. This one only has three cold cranking amps. Okay, that one there that was actually warm, it's actually at 13.2 volts. Out of vehicle, flooded, cold cranking amps at 100. Says good battery. This one here is at 727 cold cranking amps.
<clears throat> okay, this one here is at 11.97. Yeah, I know. I get to miss one. All right, there we go. It's out of vehicle. Flooded. It says replace battery. It has 71 cold cranking amps. We got some junk batteries here, especially this one here. Pretty cool cranking amps. All right. So testing for a draw on a vehicle. Like I said, I'm not an electrical guy. I hate doing this stuff. I know what I, I know. I know I can do it and find it. It's just so I I hate doing it. I really do. But um, testing for a draw and stuff, I need fresh batteries. I need good batteries. Um, you can't test for a draw and stuff. It's going to mess it all up. It'll mess the readings all up. So I got to have good batteries. Um, so I'm going to actually pack it up. And then uh, tomorrow I'm going to um, get new batteries, put the new batteries in here, and then I'm going to test the draw on the truck. There's something on the truck that is drawing off the batteries. So that'll be what's going on tomorrow. Um, and I guess I'll show you guys how to test for a draw, too. It's a pain in the butt. Um, hopefully it's something easy, like a switch or something that's stuck or something. That'd be kind of really cool. But, um, but I'll show you guys how to do that tomorrow and stuff. And, um, yeah, not the electrical guy, but got to do what you got to do, right? So I'm going to let you guys go because i got to get all washed up and cleaned up. Got to take my nightly bath here in the shop. So I'm not going to run the camera for that one. And uh, then I'm going to go and uh, pack my stuff up and take off. It's actually cooled down. There's a, a rain storm coming in or whatever. I heard on the radio that's supposed to start tonight or tomorrow. And they're saying, oh, rain. Well, the only good thing about it is now the temperatures are going to go down in the 70s. I was like, yay, I don't care. Let it rain. Cause I, it was hot. Too. I mean, it's been 100 degrees and stuff out here. Just, I asked the boss when I got here. I sent him a text message. I'm like, seriously, dude, does it ever get below 95 here? And he said, only when you leave. <laughs> so, pack stuff up. And... Uh, We'll deliver a load tonight. I'm going to run over to Costco and go to sleep. Give me a night of sleep. So I'll let you guys go. I hope everyone out there is having themselves a great day, great night. If you're watching this here video. And if you're not, well, certainly just try that all over again tomorrow. I'll catch you guys later. See ya.